What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Mathematics and Finance Indicators tutorial video. In this video we're going to be discussing price rate of change or sometimes you'll see it as rate of change or ROC. This one's uh, basic enough to where we can condense it all into one video so we're going to be covering the intro, how to program it in Python, and then also how to chart it all in this one video. It should be under 10 minutes, we'll see. So with that, let's go ahead and look at an example. So this will give us a rate of change and we'll look up for Starbucks and so here's an example of Starbucks and a rate of change of 10. And obviously rate of change is on the bottom. We've got RSI up here on the top. And so this is a every, basically it's like the current closing price minus the closing price from 10 periods ago divided by the closing price of 10 periods ago. So it's percent change minus the times 100 part. So what we have going on here is you can kind of see how... Um, it, the idea of it is is to predict sort of directionally. It's still an oscillator, so it's not totally uh, trend predicting. And you can draw a zero line as you know a, a clear signal, but generally it's gonna, you'll actually notice that it starts going up or starts going down uh, even prior to price. Uh, on this long of a time frame, it's not as uh, useful to have such a low um, rate of change. So you would kind because it's very busy if you if you haven't noticed. So. But what we can do is like let's zoom into like a specific area, and so again here this kind of it still kind of smooths out these lines. This starts really going up back here, but kind of matches price. I'm trying to find a good scenario like here where uh, rate of change actually starts going down before even price starts going down. Um, so that was a good a good example of that. But now let me compare it to uh, a 30 rate of change. So let's look at Starbucks again. And this time we'll use a 30 rate of change. And so just uh, so you can see the difference, like this one is a lot less noisy, right? So as far as being above the zero line, I mean, this one held it for almost as long as the trend occurred. And the same thing below the zero line again. Um, I'll do that for now. Uh, like here, right, it's flirting with the zero line all the way down to the basically the end. And it finally comes up across the zero line as a buy signal here. It really holds that buy signal all the way until right here, uh, which was here. So obviously pretty accurate in that sense. And then immediately tells you, you know, I don't know, a week later probably. At this point, you know, okay, go ahead and come back in. And then again, you would have rode it continuously all the way up with the ROC of 30. So with that, let's look at like another one. Let's say, um, let's look at Exxon. Uh, this is obviously the old one. I'm going to go ahead and close this one now um, since I don't really like how noisy it is. But again, so here's another example. And no, Exxon's like extremely volatile for this period. And uh, so obviously a lot of ups and downs here. It seems to be fairly uh, accurate even on Exxon, but this would be obviously a pretty hard one. But at least where it was like really noisy here, it was pretty much accurate. You know, it told, pretty much give you the sell signal here, which is here. And it didn't give you the buy signal. It's pretty much back here, so that was a pretty successful trade. Here probably wasn't the best. You made a little bit of money if you traded it, um, and so on. Let me look at. Let's look at like maybe one more, maybe eBay or the thirty. Um, okay, so here's eBay, and again, um, pretty darn accurate uh, as far as uh, with the ROC thirty. And we're, just to give you an idea, we're looking at. 10 years of data, and I'm pretty sure each plot, each bar, right, consists of three days worth of data. So really, this is like an ROC 90, right? So uh, just keep that in mind, like 90 days worth of data. Anyway, that's that. Let's go ahead and get into calculating it. Luckily, it's pretty easy to calculate uh, since it's so simple. So for this one, instead of calculating it separately, let's just calculate on the actual uh, chart itself. So if you don't already have the chart data, uh, either click the link in the description or go to Centex.com and click on Tutorials and then scroll down to the Programming uh, Stock Forex Futures Options Indicators and displaying them. Scroll down some more and we want sample code with empty slot. Click on that, scroll down and here is our sample code. So we'll just copy and paste that. Copy, 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 move it over here, paste it in, scroll up just a little bit to where we have this open area, and we're ready to rumble. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and define uh, ROC, and that's going to be the name of our rate of change. 
And then we're going to have two parameters. One will be the prices, and for this we'll be using closing prices. And the other parameter will be TF for time frame. We will return a list of ROC. Uh, for now it's empty. We will populate it. And X is going to equal time frame so that we can do the following. While X is less than the length of CP, do something. So we'll run this while loop. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say ROC is equals... And then in parentheses, again, it's new minus the old, divided by the old. So it would be CP, so where we are at the closing price. So the CP in, of X, right? So the CP is a big list of prices, right? So we want the X number in that list. Minus the CP X minus TF, because it's price rate of change from X periods ago. So uh, in this case, it would be, even though it's, I guess I shouldn't have said X periods ago. Let's say time frame periods ago. And then it will be uh, divided by, again, so it's, uh, you know, new, the current price, minus the old, the one time, X time frames ago, uh, divided by CP X minus TF, right? You could do times 100 to get the full, you know, effect of times 100%, or times 100%, times 100 to get it like an actual percentage, but it doesn't matter. You're going to be looking at the same line. So next, uh, we would say ROC.append. ROCs, and then X plus equals 1. And that would be it. Once we exhaust that while loop, what would we want to do? Well, we want to return ROC. Now we can actually come down here and we can say, uh, we'll say R, capital R, lowercase o, capital C, equals ROC, and the closing prices. And then we can say whatever time frame we want. Uh, I kind of liked the 30 with the 10 years worth of data, so we'll do that. Um, and then we'll call uh, the plotting of it. So it's going to be ax2.plot, and we plot date minus uh, sp colon. If you want to know why we're doing that, check out the Python uh, charting stocks in Python tutorial uh, series. And then, so that's the x variable. The y one will be roc minus sp. It stands for starting point. And then we want this line to be a white line, so we'll just put a W. Next, so we can compare easy, uh, we're going to say ax2.grid uh, true with a color of white. And then we're going to add that horizontal line that we had uh, at the zero mark. So it'll be ax2. Uh, axh line, so axis horizontal line. Where do we want to draw that line? At the zero. And then what color do we want it? We're going to make it cyan. And don't forget an equal sign. So that's all we really have to do. Um, I will The example code, usually I put it up on my website, but just in case you didn't catch it, you can pause the video now. It's nice and big. I forgot to make it big before starting the recording. Uh, so pause it there if you uh, got behind. Now we're ready to chart it. So let's go ahead and actually, well, actually, let's, oh, we need one more thing. Plot.y label. And this one is an ROC, ROC 30, and the color is white. Save that, run that. And stock to plot, we'll plot JP Morgan. And it looks like JP Morgan worked out for us. Very few signals, but it worked at least. <laughs> uh, so let me drag it over here. Okay, so obviously here all the way until this point, so pretty much right at the crossover, uh, you got the buy signal a little bit earlier than the uh, actual uh, mo simple moving average crossovers, uh, but then you got the sell signal right about the same time, it looks like. Um, yeah, this was pretty volatile. Let's look at another one. Let's say uh, Bank of America. America! Bring this over. Well, look at the spike here. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> that was a late one too. Very late. Still, it was like s still pretty uh, bearish at this point. And because of that spike, it like distorted the rest of it. Let's chop that spike off. Do this. Um. Anyway, you guys can play with it a little more. You can change up the uh, the actual time frame that you want to use for it. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is rate of change in Python and Matplotlib. Hopefully you guys learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.